Back to Dry Hollow Homestead, this is Danielle, and I am a homeschooling, homesteading mother of six, and food is a big part of homesteading and homemaking. There is so much food that goes down in this house every day. I have tweens, boys, tween boys who are hungry nonstop. Someone is always in the kitchen eating. So my goal as their mother is to provide nutritious, filling food that will help their growing bodies. And that is a full-time job. So we've been on vacation for a week. We've gotten back, had a big weekend this past week, but these staples that I am making today, I try to keep on hand for healthy, nutritious food for my kids um, that I can quickly make into a meal or just have as a snack. So I'll give you some of my hacks to keep on top of this. I started some yogurt in the Instapot and I can show you that. So the night before, I went ahead and did one gallon in my Instapot. I really like using my Instapot because it keeps things from sitting on my stove. I only have four burners on my stove right now, and I'm usually making cheese or something that takes a really big pot. So having another appliance that can do this and get it away from where I'm usually making breakfast and stuff is really handy to me. So I do a whole gallon and you first put it in your Instapot and set it on the yogurt setting and adjust it until it says boil. And you can't put like the Instapot lid all the way down on it, but I just kinda, you know, tilt it and set it on top. After it beeps, it has gotten up to a high temperature. It's boiled that milk, I think it's like 1, 160. I don't even really pay that much attention because I'm not worried about it getting very hot. I just want to make sure that it gets thick. And this is the best way for me to get it thick um, is to let it go ahead and go up to boil. And then I set, take it out of my Instapod, the insert, and I set it in a sink full of cold water. And I whisk it and stir it and check temperature until we get down to about 112 degrees. And once I get to about 112, 115, around there, I go ahead and put like half a cup of yogurt in that. I get the Greek yogurt from Costco that is nothing, no vanilla or anything. It's just the milk and the cultures, just like I would buy the cultures from a cheese making supply store or something. But this is a very inexpensive way to make yogurt. And I can make a lot of gallons of yogurt with that one quart from the store. So I, that's the way I have been doing it. I have done other ways where I put the, the actual culture in. But I whisk it really well. Now that we're at that 112, 115, add your culture that you want to introduce, which is our yogurt. Half a cup for me does fine for a gallon of milk. And then we're going to incubate this. Um, I usually just set it for 24 hours. That has the most nutrition but it is the most tangy um, so it's going to end up to be where it's going to be in like in the middle of the night so I'm going to set it for 24 hours but I'm just going to take it off when I wake up and get going in the morning and we're going to strain that off. Daniel, hi, what are you getting? Hi, hi, can you say hi? <laughs> Our yogurt is actually done. I'm gonna go ahead and strain this off because we like a little bit thicker yogurt. Let me kind of show you what, how much thickness we have. Hmm? Let me get you a ladle. Okay, this is what it looks like. We started that yogurt last night um, and it's best, okay, it's the sweetest at eight hours of incubation. If I would have just put it on for eight hours, it would have been done in the middle of the night. So I just put it on 24 hours. 24 hours, if you would incubate for 24 hours, it's going to have the most nutrition. It's gonna have a, a lot of probiotics, but it's gonna be a little tangier. So it's up to you what you can do. So this has been probably about 15 hours. So it's not been 24 hours, but I'm going to go ahead. So I sanitized, this is actually muslin, uh, butter muslin from cheesemaking.com. I just poured, boiling water over it to uh, sanitize it and then to help with keeping the cream from separating real fast if you were just to straight bump this I am going to go ahead and just ladle it in it's one of the hacks you to help with having thicker 
yogurt, but I don't always do that, and it turns out just fine when I don't. Just a little bit thicker. And here I go, doing exactly what I said I'm not doing because I don't have time for ladle. Now, I have a Hulk in my kitchen. You've probably, if you've been around, you've probably seen it plenty of times. That's where I am going to tie opposite ends together of this cheesecloth. It's not cheesecloth, it's butter muslin. I also use um, flour sack towels from, cost, from Walmart. I do that too. And I'm going to bring it over here. Up. Right there. So that it can be dripping into the bowl here. And this, you can go as long as you want. I'm actually going to probably let this, something's on my bag. I'm going to let this uh, drain off for probably just a few hours because I'm going to use it today. So I have my yogurt straining. I have washed off a bunch of eggs. I'm going to put a trivet in my Instant Pot and I am going to pressure, uh, pressure cook my eggs with one cup of water for two minutes. You can do this two or three minutes. I like my um, yolks to be soft. I don't want them to be totally hard. I don't want them to be, I want the very center to still be just a little bit more liquidy. I'll show you when we're done. So Pressure cook, custom, I go on high for two minutes. Start. We are only going to let it pressure cook for two minutes. Then we're going to let it release for two minutes. And then we're going to uh, release the pressure off after that. And then quick release the pressure after that. And then we're going to put it in a bowl of ice water. So I'm going to go ahead and get my ice water ready. Okay, so here's my ice water all ready for when my eggs are finished. So I have collected it the whey from our yogurt and I'm actually going to reserve back a quart of that whey. That yogurt whey can be used as a thermophilic culture in cheese making which I do a lot of here on our homestead and I have videos online to show you how if you're interested. But thermophilic culture uh, cheeses are something like a Romano or a Parmesan or an Asiago, and I can actually start those cheeses without a store-bought culture if I use this thermo this yogurt whey that I saved back. And so I always strain that off my, my yogurt because we like it a little thicker and because I save money by doing it. You can do a lot with yogurt whey, actually. You can ferment things like mayonnaise, uh, just introducing a good probiotic bacteria into different culturing things like even sauerkraut to speed it up or if you're pickling peppers or just in a pickling fermentating way you can use that that yogurt way um, so this is a good texture for me we only did it for a few hours but this yogurt looks great I'm actually going to go ahead and add some vanilla and we're going to get it in a jar to put in the fridge I'm actually sweetening this yogurt with liquid stevia from Trader Joe's. This is an organic stevia that's really tasty to me. Uh, none of my kids have any problem with it. My husband doesn't love the taste aftertaste of stevia, but we're going to get him transferred over to the good side with us someday. But my children are the ones that eat this yogurt most of the time, my kids and I, myself. And uh, I can always make it differently for him, but he doesn't eat it that often. So this is going to now go in my jar in, in the fridge. Some people I have seen, I've never done it, but actually add the vanilla and their sweetener while, before it before it inoculates, like so before it's been in the Instapot uh, for the second time while it is just keeping that temperature overnight or eight hours, you know, however long you want to inoculate your yogurt. I tend to just add it afterwards because you can also hold back half a cup of this yogurt if you do not add anything to it if you don't do the stevia or the vanilla you can use that as a starter for your next batch of yogurt <laughs> have pulled off now usually they say like for five minutes I just do it until I have time and then I'm going to peel I'm actually saving my peels for our chickens 
Um, but then I will rinse it once it's peeled with some cold water. And then I like putting it in this, um, it's a vegetable container, but it has like a section at the bottom to hold the liquid and then it has a little drainer sec part. I like this because I really do not like my eggs, hard boiled eggs to be gooey or slippery. I just, I don't like the texture of that. If they are slimy on the outside, I will not, will not eat them. So I'm gonna get these all peeled and put in here and then stuck in the fridge. Our boiled eggs are done. It sounds like a couple people want these for lunch. I will actually show you how we like to. So my goal when I make hard boiled eggs is not to have any green around the yolk. I'll show you and see if I accomplish that. And they peel really easy. I really suggest that you guys use your Instapot if you have fresh eggs. In my opinion, the perfect egg. It's barely done through the center. This is a soft boiled egg. It's not a hard boiled egg. That is just right for me. There's no green on the outside of the yolk. We like to put nutritional yeast on top of this with some salt and a little bit of everything but the bagel seasoning. Another thing I like to prep and have in the fridge at all times in the summer, which is where we are beginning to enter into, is cold brew coffee. So when you cold brew it this way, it has less acid so it's easier on your stomach I really like iced coffees in the summer so for this I can link this below but this is really handy I actually do my mint tea in this too uh, but we're going to put in this half gallon it's a cup and a half of, of coffee a cup and a half of coffee grinds already ground up um, I get the organic my Agora, I think it is, from Costco. And I grind it there at Costco before I leave. So a cup and a half. This is a cup and a third. And that's close enough to a cup and a half. And then I'm going to fill it up. So I'm gonna just give it a little stir to make sure that all of the coffee grinds have been saturated and then we're going to put a lid on this and we're going to let it brew at room temperature for 24 hours and then when that 24 hours is up we're just going to take this out and we are going to put it in the fridge and it will be ready for iced coffee okay so this is going to set it on the counter overnight for 24 hours tomorrow afternoon we will stick that in the fridge and be ready if you've been around for a little bit you know what i'm doing <laughs> i make milk kefir every day i've actually been doing two half gallons so a whole gallon a day and uh, we love milk kefir smoothies so that's another thing that i always have on hand i feel like you can add something. We do this with popcorn as a dinner sometimes. We add this to our breakfast or lunch just to help it boost the nutritional value of whatever meal I have made. And the kids love it. We love it. I drink lots of milk of your smoothie. Obviously, we drink a gallon a day and sometimes it's still not enough that someone will come to the fridge, want a milk of your smoothie and they aren't in there. So I do this. In the summertime, I also enjoy making milk kefir smoothie or kefir popsicles. I make kefir popsicles. Uh, I do about half milk kefir and half yogurt when I'm doing that. So I just go ahead and mix up whatever I usually want. I always, it always varies be between what we have and and what I put in it. Um, as a smoothie just whatever fruits on hand I always like to have a little bit of stevia or honey or maple syrup some vanilla some collagen some kind of vitamin C I actually just have vitamin C powder or crystals and fruit bananas things like that oh actually I had frozen bananas I need to go grab um, in my smoothie and then I'll use half smoothie and half yogurt to make my popsicles. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, for today's smoothie I'm going to throw in a banana and a half probably frozen banana and strawberries. 
peaches. What else does this have? Mango and pineapple. A little bit of vitamin C powder. This is just whatever to your taste, whatever you have. It varies for me, just what, what we have on hand. Um, stevia. And a little vanilla. Oop, a little bit. And I always like to put a little bit of collagen in this um, just because there's not much protein and I want to add more. It's really hard to get enough protein in your diet if you are not adding meat to every single meal <laughs> every time you put something in your mouth. So I'm going to blend this up. So, so I made about three cups of a mixture. I did like half milk kefir and half of half milk kefir smoothie and half of the yogurt and three cups filled this up perfectly. So we're actually going to freeze them just like this and then after one hour we will come back and we will add the lid and the popsicle sticks. So set a timer for one hour, stick these in the freezer. So my son picked a bunch of mint tea. I'm going to do it in our French press with boiling water and then this is probably about a cup of mint tea, so this will or mint, so this will actually make half a gallon of mint tea. So we'll steep it for several minutes, probably five to ten minutes, and then we will mix it with sugar water. In an hour, these have been in the freezer, so you're supposed to pop this on, the lid that comes with it, and stick in your popsicles, popsicle sticks, leaving about an inch, inch and a half out and then we stick it back in until it's frozen solid <clears throat> and then they pop right right out they don't stick at all these are really nice